you take this pebble and throw it against a rock hard enough and enough times, it will be broken down into smaller pieces and eventually into sand. If we could go further, this sand would too be broken down into individual atoms. In a single drop of water, there are more atoms than there are grains of sand on all the beaches in the world. The Greeks thought that all matter could be broken up into tiny fundamental particles which they called atoma, from the Greek meaning indivisible and from which we get atoms. They postulated the idea that there would come a point when all matter, a pebble for example, couldn't be broken up any further. In actual fact, we now know that atoms can be broken up even further into protons and neutrons that make up the nucleus and the electrons that orbit around it. Thanks to Ernest Rutherford, we now know the true structure of the atom. But our ideas about atomic structure didn't start out this way. You see, back in 1904, scientists thought that an atom was a solid sphere of positive charge that had embedded in it negatively charged electrons, resembling a kind of tasty dessert, earning it the name the Plum Pudding Model. However, when Ernest Rutherford came along, he changed the way we thought of the atom. In 1909, Ernest Rutherford designed and directed an experiment that would reveal the true structure of the atom, in what was called the Gold Foil Experiment. Simple but ingenious, this involved firing radioactive alpha particles at a sheet of thin gold foil. According to the Plum Pudding model, these positive particles should have been deflected by a few degrees as they passed by the negative electrons distributed throughout the atom. However, Rutherford found that a few of these alpha particles were deflected at much greater angles than predicted, indicating the presence of the atomic nucleus. He suggested that as most particles passed straight through, the atom was in fact mostly empty space, and those that bounced back had hit a small, concentrated positive charge, the nucleus. Of course, for the atoms to be neutral, there also had to be equal negative charge somewhere in the atom. This was later discovered to be electrons that orbited the central positive nucleus. Unlike the plum pudding model, Rutherford's model was backed up by experimental evidence, meaning that the plum pudding model was out, and Rutherford's model of the atom was in. Though Rutherford's ideas were figured using classical methods in 1909, today our more advanced theories support the conclusions derived from the observation of scattering patterns in the original experiment. Further predictions and observations helped us to understand that even particles like protons and neutrons can be broken up even further into particles called quarks. And even the quarks are thought to be made up of one-dimensional oscillating strings, but that's another story. Quarks can exist as six different species, up, down, top, bottom, strange and charm. A proton is made up of two up quarks and one down quark, which gives it an overall charge of positive one. The neutron is made up of two down quarks and one up quark, which gives it an overall neutral charge of zero. The electrons in the atoms, as far as we know, are elementary and so will not break up any further. But how do we know all this about atoms, as we can't see subatomic particles, even with an electron microscope? Well, the Large Hadron Collider in Geneva was designed for this very purpose. By accelerating protons to the near the speed of light and smashing them into each other, we can break them apart to find out what they're made of, which is how we discovered the quark. The LHC is the largest and most powerful particle accelerator in the world and has led to some of the most profound scientific discoveries today. Yet there is still so much to discover and perhaps the Large Hadron Collider can bring us one step closer to unravelling the mysteries of the universe. So there you have it. Now you know a bit more about our world of atoms and quarks. And whether you choose to study it professionally or just as a hobby, our world really is truly fascinating. And now, in true Brian Cox style, I'm going to walk dramatically into the distance while the camera pans away. Thank you for watching.